Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome back to another Linux review. This is a first impressions at something quite different than what I've looked at in the past. Today we are looking at KAOSX. And I'm not sure if that's just K-A-O-S, or if it's meant to be chaos. But, it is far from chaos, because they attempt to do something very few distributions have done. For lack of a better term, I will continue with this review with the pronunciation of this OS as chaos just for grins. If that's not it, I apologize. But the purpose of chaos is to bring a little bit of unity to the Linux desktop environment. What they have decided was instead of looking at offering GNOME and LXDE and ICEWM, OpenBox, KDE, etc., 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 because there are so many different desktop environments out there. They should focus on one single desktop and make it the best that they can do, as well as focusing on one development tool set. Instead of GDK and QT, they have chosen to focus on KDE and QT packaged together. By doing this, they're able to make sure that the desktop that they have chosen is secure, stable, and functioning to the best of their ability with a great suite of packages that focus only on these areas. This is also only a 64-bit operating system, so you're not going to be able to place this on older hardware or anything that cannot handle 64-bit OS. Now their attempt to do this is to bring a little bit more stability in their operating system or their flavor of Linux and I have even read that they may be considering going away from the Linux kernel in the future and looking at a different heart to the OS, which is kind of an interesting idea. Now, they use Pac-Man as their package manager, but they aren't Arch-based, nor are they Chakra-based. They build all of their packages from scratch and build them and support them in their own repositories while you can still get packages from source or from other repos to use within Chaos, they specifically state they are not Arch-based, etc. Interesting enough, their unique look, which I kind of like the way they've got their little flowers right here set up in their desktop, their look and feel, their branding is quite nice, and very polished. If we look at their menu schemes, and I bring this up just so you can see how they've done their menu, it's a little different than what you would normally see with KDE. Uh, each window is slightly separated with its own shadow, as you can see here. There is one weird thing that I did notice with education in their education department. I've got four instances of marble and I don't believe any of those actually turn on or work at this point in time. At least most of the time when I clicked on them, nothing happened. Uh, a small hiccup maybe, and then again maybe they fixed it in their newest ISO. When I got this a little over a week ago, or right at a week ago I guess it was, uh, they were still on KDE 4.13. But since then, they have had a couple updates, and I did notice when I was looking through things, I'm just going to keep going through the menu while you're listening to me babble along, you know, that they had upgraded recently to KDE 14, and so upon doing the updates, I noticed I too have been updated to 14. Now one thing to mention in multimedia here 
is I did install GUVC View separately and I will talk about that in a little bit although I was easily able to get Simple Screen Recorder from the repos they did not have GUVC View from their own repos and that was quite interesting I thought maybe I might have to look somewhere else for a tester utility. Now they do have the QTV4L2 test utility but that's not really a webcam uh, window device that I thought I could use for this. And we move on anyway. They're using Caligra instead of open or LibreOffice I mean. And then of course they've got their own system settings which I'll bring up so you can take a look at here. You know, very clean, you know, uncluttered well organized. It's kind of nice. And of course the utilities and system settings. Now they don't have all of the applications I noticed for KDE. For instance I noticed Conqueror was missing and is still one of my favorite file and browsers from the old KDE days. But I did see that Dolphin was here so I could use it to look at my file structures etc. And it was also interesting to note that they do have the SUSE Studio image writer down here as well and I believe they use Octopi for their uh, file or, or application installer although they do have the add remove software here as well you can also use of course Pac-Man in the console to do your applications now they've got a great website and I want to bring that up here let's go ahead and minimize that and move this across and bring up their website. They're using Cupzilla as their browser and they talk about a few things that I mentioned about how the idea behind Chaos or KAOS is to create an integrated rolling transparent distribution focusing on one desktop environment that being KDE and QT in a 64-bit environment and they have some very good information here in their news area you can search their packages you know, download the latest images they do talk about how the newest image now is based on KDE 14 in fact if we were to open up something like uh, Dolphin here and go into control area help and about KDE you will see that we are running 4.14.0 you also a moment to note that we are running the kernel 3. Dot, I think 3.15 at this time is the kernel version that they are using that I saw get updated. Now when I went to look for GUVC view and it wasn't in their packages down here. I couldn't I am searching in all packages and I do a quick view for GUVC view and search nothing would come up I couldn't find anything no such pattern so I did some looking online and I found that they have a chaos community package section in the github and with that I was able to search on it find it and with this right here very simple instructions to follow about installing the SDL 2 dependencies using Pac-Man and that right there and then being able to use KCP I was able then to install and configure GUVC view so as you can see I've got it up and running it worked out very well now inside of the chaos community packages you can search on different packages and find others that you're looking for now not everything you're probably looking for may be there uh, but they do have a lot available. Yeah. So far this week when looking at chaos things have been good and secure. I haven't had any breaks. In fact I want to point out that the reboot on this is very quick and the shutdown even quicker. You know when I had to restart a couple times I think it was less than 30 seconds for it to shut down, restart, get to the control, well not the control alt, but get to the login screen. <laughs> oh, Ive, bad habits. They're hard to break sometimes. <laughs> 
Anyway, KAOS is a different style desktop, even though it is KDE. It is a different philosophy, but quite interesting. If, if you're really liking KDE and that's all you care about, if you only use Qt applications, then uh, this would be definitely a desktop environment to check out, or no less to check out, with 64-bit operating system in mind, of course, that you cannot use this in 32-bit environment. They do say in some of the readings that I have looked at that you can use GDK, just not out of the box, but you can install that. So if you do have some applications that are GDK based, you can get those to work. And they do have an explanation too in their frequently asked questions about why there are no 32-bit applications. And as stated, they have said that there are really only three to five major 32-bit applications that are still out there. Uh, an example being Skype, for instance. But all of the extra packages that need to be built so that those applications can run can get between 150 to 200 dependencies just for these three to five packages as they have stated and therefore that can cause some issues when building all that extra infrastructure and I agree with them I think sometimes you know you have to say hey are we in a 64-bit environment which has been available for probably close to 10 years now or are we still stuck in our old ways in our old environments we've got to realize that no matter how much we like to think that technology and equipment will last there is going to be a shelf life there is a shelf life for some things and while you can find operating systems and other flavors of Linux for instance to rejuvenate that old equipment sometimes you have to face facts that it's time to take it and turn it into what it truly is that being a doorstop and move on <laughs> anyway chaos was fun to look at it was pretty whimsical in fashion I like the way that they branded it, set it up. They've got a great website to discuss uh, how their philosophy is and the direction that they're going. It will be interesting to follow them if they do decide to step away from the Linux kernel and go to a different uh, backbone to their OS because it will be quite interesting to see how that works. Keeping it in, of course, the idealism of open source and free and FOSS, etc., etc. So that is the review for this week. I hope you enjoyed Chaos or KAOS. Check it out. Links will be, of course, in the description as always. I hope you enjoyed it. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever it is, I hope you're having a good one been a long hard week for me and I'm glad I'm able to get this out to you but until next time enjoy and thank you very much for watching bye guys